What's up, everybody? It's Prion Joni. So I'm using the microphone, the onboard microphone on my new laptop. I'm hoping it sounds good. I heard it sounds good. Uh, not using the lav mic. I did a run where there was a hum because I'm using the unbalanced microphone. Anyways, today I'm going to show you my secret as to how I can mix in key, mixing songs in the same key or compatible keys so effortlessly whenever I play that I'm able to do it 95% of the time. It's made playing songs together that make musical sense much easier. And you know what else is easy? Finding music for your DJ playlist. Thanks to our sponsor, Direct Music Service. DMS is an online database for working DJs and mix artists. It's the one-stop shop where you can get your music from for your gigs. It's a searchable, organized database with thousands of edits, remixes, and different versions of your favorite tracks from many different genres. What's also awesome about Direct Music Service, if you're always on the road just like me, they have this awesome mobile app so that you could search your favorite tunes, put them on a wish list, and they'll be ready for you on your Dropbox folder when you get home. You can now save some money and get a discount using one of these two coupon codes. Use the code PJMONTHLY and get 30% off your first month off any monthly subscription. Use the coupon code PJ yearly and get 10% off your entire first year of any yearly subscription. Go to directmusicservice.com today to sign up. I wanted to try a cheesy Linus segue and I'm probably never doing that again. Anyways, when I talk to a lot of people and ask them, hey, do you ever mix in keys since Serato DJ analyzes the key and you can tell what key your songs are. Do you ever mix in key? And I get a lot of reasons from people where they say, no, I don't mix in key. I want to focus on the songs that I'm playing on. I don't want to be bothered with another dimension of a variable when I should be focusing on the music and the dance floor. And I get other people who say they're interested in mixing in key, but whenever you sort your playlist, like your Serato crate, when you sort it in key, like for example, right here, I have all my music sorted in key. And when you look down the BPMs, they're all in a weird order. The song orders are different and uh, it looks like it does it by artist. So, Eight years ago, I developed this method, and I'm not saying I'm the first person to do it. I just never learned this from anyone else when it was still only Serato Scratch Live. There was no key analysis tool, but I already was I was already in the practice of listening to every single song I download and typing in the key value. I know you can use software like mixed in key to do that, but I found that doing it manually by ear gave me less mistakes. Even today, Serato DJ doesn't get all the keying perfectly. I say it's perfect about 80% of the time. Well, anyways, I got really tired of building playlists in key order because if I wanted to spin in key, I had to play the playlist in order. Now, what if I want to pull songs randomly? Well, what I did, I created this crate called Harmonic Mixing, and I have 12 sub crates in it to every harmonic key, all 12 in a chromatic scale. Initially, when I built this playlist, it was in order chromatically. It started with A, B sharp, B, C, C sharp. Then I later learned about the Camelot wheel and that the Camelot wheel is in fifth intervals. So I changed the order of all these crates in the Camelot order going from one to 12 and one is A flat minor or the relative B major. And whenever I download music and I'm assigning all this new music to crates and playlists within my library, in addition to the ones I normally put it in, I make sure that every single song in whatever key they're in is also thrown into one of these 12 folders. So if I have a bunch of songs that are in A minor, it's going to go over here in eight and I throw them in there. I started doing this with just my electronic music and then I got in the habit of doing it with all my music. And what I found with this method is once you have a big enough library, check this out here in 
A minor, C major. I can sort all the songs by song title. I can sort them by BPM. I can see all my A minor songs or C major songs that are compatible. They're all together. And when I want to jump to another key in a fifth interval, I can either go from eight to seven or eight to nine. And then look at whatever compatible tempo is with the song that I'm playing. So that means I could play 75 BPM, play an A minor, and just look at the A minor folder, the 8 folder. And then when I'm ready to try something else, I can move on to the other folder and look at the relative tempo. Now, let's say I'm in A minor, number 8, and I'm just going to pull a random song. Yeah, Christina Aguilera, What a Girl Wants. That would, that would be perfect. And somebody requests... Let's just say Marshmallow alone. Now, A minor number eight is not a fifth interval compatible with 10, which is B minor. So what I use is I open my preparation tool. I throw Marshmallow in there. And what I do is I climb my way to 10. So after What a Girl Wants, I look for something in nine or a couple songs in nine. We'll do Mobamba, 75 BPM. And then we'll do maybe another song that's in 10. As the Rush Comes by Motorcycle. And uh, here we go. We can go from eight to nine. And I probably would add another song that's in 9, E minor. And I'll be going into 10. And when I start Marshmallow, it's going to sound really, really good because it's harmonically mixed. It's not like clashing instruments. And that's basically how I mix in key. When I'm in 100 BPM, I'm not thinking about, oh my gosh, I got to keep in key. Because when I'm in this playlist, all my 100 BPM B minor songs are here. Now, when you first do this method of creating eight, uh, 12 different crates per harmonic key in the chromatic scale, it's going to start out small. It's not going to have a lot. And it, over time, it builds. And I've been doing this since 2012, and I've built up to 743 songs. Now, mind you, my whole library isn't in here. The majority of my library since 2012 is in here. And that's not saying a lot for my song download because I've only had 743 songs. And a lot of them are like clean version, dirty version. So I probably have about 400 songs in there. But 400 is a good count. So whenever I'm within a key family and a tempo family, I have more than enough to jump around the keys in fifth intervals, according to the Camelot wheel. And I basically play in key anywhere between 90% to maybe even 100% of the night. When I have an electronic music night, I play 100% in key. I don't think about it too much when I'm playing in key because I could just browse and check out what I got. And when you're used to doing that, you start developing the habit of knowing what songs are in what key. So your mind starts thinking about what song you're gonna play next within that same key. Now, an extra thing I did is I matched the color of the keys along with the color blocks on the left. Totally optional, but I like to keep it in color. I know that two is green. I know that eight and nine are both purple. I know 10 is blue. Uh, 11 is blue as well. And I think 12 is blue as well. Yep, a tealish blue. One is kind of a green. Two is kind of a green. Three is kind of a green, yellow, pea color. Four is a yellow color. Five is an orangey color. Six is an even more orangey color. <laughs> See, like, I, I have this all memorized. And over time, when you mix in key long enough, you start remembering the keys. Like, without looking at the screen, two is D sharp minor. Four is F minor. 11 is F sharp minor. 12 is C sharp minor. Number three, I always forget. Three is B flat minor. So basically, when I download a song, I get it analyzed. When I first did this on Scratch Live, I went one by one with every song with a piano and figured out what the key is. I don't just take Serato's word for it when it comes to my grid spacing, when it comes to my tempo value, and when it comes to the key. I check it one by one. I make sure that the tempo is right. 
I make sure that the gridding is right, and I still check with my phone if the key is right. On my phone, I'm using a piano app. The reason is because Serato is accurate with the key analysis about 80% of the time. And when it's wrong, it's actually wrong with a compatible key. Say there was a song that was G minor, Serato might spit it out as C minor or D minor. Well, why is that? And why is the Camelot wheel ordered this way? Well, the reason why the Camelot wheel is ordered in the way it is, it's in fifth intervals. Fifth intervals are two different scales that have the most notes that are the same. So when Serato makes a mistake, it might throw a G minor, a C minor analysis. And I go one by one with each song that I download. That's probably also why I don't have that many songs downloaded because I know I have a tedious process. Now, as a musician, it's easy for me to do that by ear because I can quickly figure out the root note. And the thing I also do is I make sure that everything is marked as a minor. If something is B flat major, I mark it as a minor. So that way, when I see these, it's always 6A, it's bright, it's orange. Unless you guys can tell me a good reason why I should be marking my majors, I mark everything as a minor. If something is a major, I always mark it as its relative minor. Now, I know that not everybody can do the piano thing by ear. So the easy way to go, just make sure to throw it in the appropriate folder. But if you want to be more accurate with it and you don't know how to figure out the key using a piano app by ear, you can also just take the song, if it's a well-known song, and just look up what the key is. And if it shows a major, just use its relative minor. So once I got that done, I throw the songs into the harmonic mixing crates. And I titled these one through 12, and it starts with the minor and the relative major. So that way I can easily see what they are. And it also tells me, it's a reminder to me, Two is a D sharp minor. Six is a G minor. And if I have a song that I looked up and it's G sharp major, I know that's F minor. Now, how else did this benefit me? Well, when I started playing guitar in my sets, in my live sets, this made it really, really easy for me to be able to quickly pick up on the key. I can do it by ear, but the problem with doing it by ear is when you're finding what note you're supposed to be on, Everybody else out there hears it too when you're noodling away, going up and down the frets, and they hear you playing all the wrong notes until you get to the right one. Well, whenever I'm playing a song that I haven't practiced and I'm just going to improvise over it and say I'm in F minor, I'm in four, I know to play my scales off F minor. And if I'm playing with another DJ and I can see his screen, and he has a song that's 2A, I know to get on D-sharp minor. Now, mind you, if I'm playing with another DJ, I also have to keep in mind that there is a 20% chance that his key analysis is wrong. But in a nutshell, having this system of organizing my crates has made it easier for me to be able to mix and key 90 to 100% of the time, depending on what I'm playing and be able to play a musical instrument when I'm playing live. I don't have to worry about sorting the tempo because I can sort the tempo within one key folder. I don't have to worry about not being able to sort the song title or the artist because all the same keys are all in their own little crate. You can do this with Serato, Rekordbox, Virtual DJ, Tractor, whatever DJ software, as long as it allows you to enter your key value. Even better when it allows you to view the numeric key value, which is the Camelot numeric value. Anyways, if you got any questions, comments, or anything to suggest in regards to mixing and key using 12 sorted playlists based on key value, please leave them in the comments section below. We'd love to hear your thoughts answer any questions, or learn anything new from you guys that I haven't covered in this video today. If you like this video, please click that like button. And if it's your first time here and you found this video useful, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you get a notification the next time I upload a video. 
Also, don't forget to add me on Instagram where I put sneak peeks of my videos here on YouTube before they come out. Really appreciate you guys for watching. Thanks, take care, and stay healthy.